You just finished your first math module on the digital SAT and you're feeling amazing. Not only did you finish every question on the section, but each one felt super easy and you even finished with time to spare. As you sit there looking around at all the other students still working on the module, you can't help but begin to daydream about the Harvard acceptance letter you're going to get in the mail any day now. Then the proctor tells you that it's time to move on to the second module, so you flip open your laptop and confidently click start. Then it hits you. You don't even know how to approach the first problem, so you click skip, hoping that the next problem will be a little bit easier. But then the second one is even harder than the first problem. It's like the first module was in English and then this one is in Latin. You frantically skip through three more questions as the room begins to swim around you. Before you know it, the timer goes off and you've only attempted half of the problems, let alone got them right. All of your Ivy League dreams come crashing down to the floor. If this just happened to you or you're about to take your first digital SAT, then this video is for you. I'm going to guide you through exactly how to approach the dreaded second math module. Welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here, I'm Lucas, and I help students get their dream SAT scores in my community, the Student Society, and on the side, I like to make YouTube videos for free to help as many high schoolers as possible learn the secrets to improving their SAT scores as quickly and easily as possible. So first things first, if you got a hard second math module, then the first thing you need to do is give yourself a pat on the back. This is because the only way to get a harder second math module is to actually do well on the first one. So if anything, it's a bad sign if you don't have an incredibly difficult second math module because that means that you probably didn't do so well on the first one. And it's really important that you do well on the first one because the only way to get a perfect 1600 or to even get above a 1500 is to do well enough on the first math module. Because basically how it works, in case you don't know, is that the first math module determines whether you get the harder or the easier second math module. And if you go to the lower math module, then there's actually a limit on how high your score can be at that point. So basically, if you get the easy second math module, even if you get 100% of the questions on it right, it's still impossible for you to get an 800 on the math section. So since the SAT is largely a mental game, what you wanna do first is just relax and calm down and tell yourself this is a good thing that you got the hard module because that means that you are doing well so far. The second thing that you're gonna do is actually begin to reshape and remodel the way that you approach problems. If you get to the second harder module, the problem is no longer gonna be whether you memorized a fact about a certain math equation or not. Because at this point, what matters is creativity in how you approach problems. The hardest SAT math problems are never going to be simply just throwing up random information that you've memorized. It's going to be about applying the information you know in totally unique scenarios that most likely you've never seen before or even seen anything similar before. So at this point, before you even look at the first problem, you need to tell yourself that when you see a problem, you're not going to start thinking, oh my god, like how do I approach this? What have I seen that's similar? What you tell yourself is, first, you need to identify what you need to solve for. So you need to actually figure out what are you looking for. Once you've identified what you need to get, you need to figure out how you're going to get there. And so this is usually the tricky part because in this harder module, it's going to be situations you haven't seen before or something you're just really not familiar with. And so it's going to be really important that first you figure out what you need to find and then you have to figure out a way to get there. So for example, a question might seem super difficult at first, but after looking at it for a little bit, you realize that all you need to do is some basic unit conversion, but just with some unit comparisons that you don't usually see. Or it could be a unique application of some formula that you know, like the quadratic formula. So it wouldn't be as simple as just plugging in for A, B, and C, but maybe there's some other way that you can still use the formula to get you to the answer. The third thing that you can do, as often as it said, is to skip questions that you're completely stuck on. And this is especially true in the second math module. This is because if you actually take all of the problems in the first module and all of the problems in the second module and compare how much each of those questions is worth, the questions in the second math module are actually less detrimental to miss for your final score. And that makes sense, right? The people who make the SAT don't want to punish you as badly for missing a question that's harder than they would for one that's easier. So as long as you did well on that first math module, which has some of the easier questions included as well, then you're already past the questions that are going to be really detrimental to miss for your actual final score. So if you're in the second module and you just have a question that you can't figure out no matter how many creative solutions you've tried, then especially in the second section, just skip it and come back later if you still have time 
because they're harder questions, they're not gonna ding you as bad if you miss them. So of course make sure that if you're literally in the last 30 seconds, you at least put an answer for every single problem. But when you're still early on, just skip the problems that you're completely stuck on. Because a kind of cool thing about the human brain is that as you're going through the other questions, sometimes your brain will be subconsciously still working on a creative solution to one of the earlier problems, and you might spontaneously think of an answer, or maybe not an answer, but at least a way to approach the problem, and then later on you can go back and actually do it and hopefully get the right answer, instead of just guessing randomly and then moving on to the next problems. Now if you still have time until your SAT, you actually have a huge advantage over the people who are watching this video the night before their SAT. All of these tips I've talked about are helpful for when you're actually about to take the SAT and you can't do any more studying at all, but if you have the time to actually prepare and build your knowledge about SAT topics, then you're in a much better place than if you're just watching this video right before your test. So go watch this video to learn the exact study blueprint that I use to get a 1570 on my SAT. I'll see you in the next one.